All right, and here's the video review for Transformers Legacy Evolution Leader, not Leader Class, Voyager Class Tarn. Leader Class would be cool. Uh, Voyager Class Tarn. Uh, super stoked to have an official version of Tarn. We've gotten Coulter from uh, MMC, and uh, I can't remember what they called him in uh, Iron Factory set. It'll come to me halfway through this video, and I'll just blurt it out like uh, Bruce Boxleitner. But anyway. Here is Tarn. He is a tank. He has some differences, advantages, disadvantages compared to some of the other versions. Um, he does have a, the turret uh, can mount and this upper turret rotates. Other than that, not a whole lot of moving parts here. You can, uh, because these are pegged in, you can raise them up a little bit if you'd like them to be slightly angled higher. Um, all that stuff. Like he has some fake. It's weird. They put fake little wheels in the treads. To mimic the kind of wheels that you would expect a toy like this to have small wheels so it can still roll while not actually having to make functional treads. But, um, they're just fake. I mean, you, you could just have them, I guess they're just something small to, like, set them up a little bit so you can slide them around and not scuff up all of the treads. But that's just weird that they would mold those in when the treads aren't functional, the wheels aren't functional. Just give me treads so it looks like a tank. But anyway, like I said, not... You know, it has all the limitations of a mainline retail toy, although I feel like they've overcome a lot of them. Um, there's a couple things I wish were slightly different on him, uh, mostly when we get to robot mode. The one the one tank mode issue I have is, like, his kneecaps. Um, it actually doesn't look bad. It kind of looks like a angled fin off the back of the tank, as if he were, like, a fast tank. But um, I, I wish they could have put, like, a pin through here so these gold flaps could kind of fold down and be flat along the back versus just solidly permanently angled up like that but uh like i said it doesn't look horrible but i feel like it would look better if you could fold those down that's my only real complaint here in tank mode because he's got a rotating turret and uh the fake wheels but they allow him to kind of skate around like that but it's a fun little tarn tank and a nice representation of what he's supposed to look like The transformation, we'll go ahead and pop this off. There's a, lot, a couple different things you can see, like this little rotational joint uh, here that allows the whole thing to turn. There's a, some several different ways you can use the uh, the turret and these guns in robot mode, the fusion cannon uh, in robot mode, and we'll get to those. Um, but transforming it, uh, his legs are pegged in kind of up here and then onto some little tabs here. There's a couple of slightly confusing bits in the instructions. Um, like one, it tells you when you're transforming them to first angle the legs here at the knee, and then these actually bend in. And they, but they're not super clear about how that these actually push in to finish transforming it. Um, and I feel like it would almost be easier to bend those first and then bend it at the knee when transforming it to help. Because this this is really tight, and trying to get it to just bend there to line up this little uh, slot over this peg hole. It's hard to do, and you, you want to bend them. And even then, see, when you, when you do it like that, it sits way too far forward to peg in, and you've really got to kind of wiggle that down first and then fold it up to get that peg to line up. So just a little tip there. Uh, when transforming it, when it tells you to angle it here, angle it here instead, and then fold it up. A whole lot easier that way. But extend them there, unpeg them. Just the feet just fold down flat like that. And then here, like I said, here are the pegs on these arm flaps. Uh, these... Um, the tread here has a weird flap that is, the first time when you're trying to turn it into a tank can be hard to do. Like it will, the first time one of these treads popped off at this friction hinge. These are not pinned, this one's pinned in, but this one is not. Um, because when you pull the tread out, you can see there's a, this flat piece here has to fit into like a, this little slot just past where this hinge is. And, uh, when you try to do that the first time, it can get stuck if you don't have the arm fold it all the way out like that. And the instructions tell you not to attach the arm here. Uh, you can see it pegs onto the leg until after this is folded in, but it's a whole lot easier if you plug that all the way in because then it holds the arm. This is just a, a friction hinge. There's no clicky clacky or ratcheting here. And that makes it a whole lot easier to fold this piece in and get that all lined up properly without either of these pieces conflicting that badly. Um, so I recommend doing that as well. But you flip these up and around and then you fold the fake tread piece or outer tread piece that was on the bottom of the tank in to, to fill in that, that gap to make that hole. You can see there's some five millimeter peg holes on these treads as well. 
we'll go ahead and straighten his legs up, split them apart. And then uh, this piece right here, you kind of unpeg this. And also, when you're going to tank mode, the head piece, the, the tab right here that this attaches to has to be at an angle. And it can be really hard to get, like, it, it, when you're pushing on it, it wants to rotate. As you push up on it, it wants to rotate this to be more flat. And you got to kind of hold his head up like this. So that's kind of at a downward angle until you click that into place. But then you want to make sure that his robot head here push up on his chin so he's tilted all the way back. Because otherwise, when you cover, when you bring this down, because it doesn't go forward, it comes back and down to, to tab in for tank mode. And you want to make sure his chin is out of the way so this can kind of cover it and conceal it. Because otherwise, his chin's going to be right here. And you can kind of get it to sit in place, but you're going to see the bottom half of his face there. So make sure that's like that. Anyway. Oh, and we'll go ahead and flip that down. These treads pull out and rotate around and up like this. And that lets this chest plate fold down. And then it tabs in. Once you get these all the way up, tabs into these, uh, push these in like that. And then that will tab into place like that. Then you can flip his head up. And again, he's got a flat peg here in front of his head that's going to tab into that same slot that. Uh, went onto the other tab in tank mode. And then you just bring his arms down, uh, rotate them in, rotate, or actually rotate them around so the purple hinges back, then this panel flips around to form, go on the outside of his arms, again, two five millimeter pegs on each of these, rotate his wrist, again, rotate this so it's on the interior, fold that around to the outside, flip that around, and then bring this up onto his back, Actually, no, like th from this, you rotate this around like this, then snap it up onto his back. It pegs into place right there. Then these unpeg and rotate around. And then they kind of clip into place these at, at the slight angle that you should have on Tarn. And then you can take this as a, onto the arm as a fusion cannon. And there's a few different ways, again, there's different ways to use this. Let's go ahead and peg this on here. And depending on how you have this oriented, you can see plugging this in here on either the high or the low peg here on his arm, it interferes with the tread. Now you can rotate this piece around like this and plug it into the lower half of his arm. That'll give you the clearance, although the fusion cannon sits a little higher on his arm. You can plug it in up here, which works, kind of has, like you don't get quite as much posability here uh, because of how this hits against the, tre the tread, but, uh, but it works. And uh, I think that's my best orientation on the arm for the fusion cannon, the dual fusion cannon. But you can also take this, you could plug it on like this, and you can attach the guns further forward if you want. That helps a little bit with some of that clearance issue because this peg is low enough so you can make it like that. You can, uh, if you'd rather have it the other way, you can, like I said, you, you've got a lot of options on how to make this work uh, here like that, plug it in like that. Different configurations. I thought that last way was probably the better of them. You can also take this, the instructions show you how to take this, flip it forward like this. You can rotate these down and clip them. They peg on right down here. And then you can attach this like a backpack to have the cannons come up over his shoulders. And again, you've got all the same, however you want them to sit rotationally around this hinge, if you want them to sit a little lower, you can mess around with it a little bit. If you want to have this backpack come up and have them kind of angle over his shoulder, you can do it like that. Um, I've also found that you can take this, rotate this all the way down and around like this, and then attach the cannons vertically. And I think this looks good. If you don't want to have deal with uh, the arm cannon version of it, I think having just those stick up over his chest, if you want him to have hold other guns, uh, you can do it like that. And speaking of holding other guns, I did a picture of this on Twitter. But uh, Ariel Lemon on Shapeways way back in the day had this Voss. It transforms. I'm not going to do it. We've, I've done a review of this. But it has a 5 millimeter peg, which means if you have this, you can have him hold Voss here. It's got the little side handle if you want to hold him like that. Um, but yeah, so you can hold Voss. You just want to flip that down and open up his hand. He does have openable fingers. You can have him hold Boss like that. 
So if you want to, if you want to have him wield a weapon and not have the fusion cannon get in the way of anything he might be holding, you can put him on the back like that. Which I think, like I said, does look pretty cool. Even even if you're not doing that, just as a better way to store it uh, when he's not actively deploying them. And it also helps. He's very skinny from the side, and putting the backpack here helps a little bit bulk out that out and makes it look a little bit more. I mean, granted, the human can be skinny. You can also kind of angle those forward. Like I said, you could rotate this up and angle them further forward over his his uh, shoulders. You got a lot of options there. Also, since I had uh, Ariel Lemons Voss, here's the one from Iron Factory. Does not have a five millimeter peg. You kind of got to, you can get his fingers around the handle, but he doesn't really hold it securely. You do kind of want to have him support it with his other hand. But uh, if you want to have him, if you have the Iron Factory version of Voss, uh, he can wield that one as well. So your call. But there are two bosses that look decent with him, and that's kind of cool. You can also take these, some pictures have had these, um, and plug them one into each other. I think it probably the other, this way probably looks better with the bigger square chunk at the back, and have him hold it as a long rifle. I don't know that he ever did that in the comics, but you can have him hold it as a As a long rifle, it's kind of hard for him to aim it, but uh, there you go. He's got it if you want it. Go ahead and put him in his standard config. Now, the molding on this, you know, they make them hollow, which is fine, and they have some little ridges here that, one, reinforce the structure and also are also come out in curves, so from certain angles it kind of looks like the curve goes all the way down. And on this one, it's not so bad because of it's got a the way it, it plugs in, it's got enough clearance here. When you plug it in on the side, all of that's down past here and it looks nice. This one, it comes all the way back to here. So when you put this on here, it holds it out just a smidge. And I would have I wish they could have maybe cut those down. I would have been okay with this part being flatter and uh just, you still have the support piece there, but have it be flat so this could sit flush against the uh, the center piece like this does. Because based just based on the comic, I feel like this the, the actual fusion cannon configuration is a little wider than it was in the comic. Like I, th I think they were slightly offset, and you can do the offset bit, um, maybe a little more offset than the one in the comic was. But um, I just feel like they should be slightly closer together for the arm configuration mode. But whatever, you know, it's for considering that it's a, it's a retail official Hasbro released version of Tarn, I'll accept some limitations because I think, just think it's cool that we got this character. And it's a pretty fun little toy. Not perfect, but fun. And uh, cool. Also, speaking of comic only Decepticon leaders, we have gotten in Legacy or. There he is with Jaxus. They look good together. Would they team up in real life? Well, I mean, again, none of it's real life. You know what I mean. Probably not. But it's cool to see two characters. Two characters I never would have thought we'd actually get. I mean, we've gotten Jaxus before, but never this comic accurate of a Jaxus. It's always been a repaint of, like, Jetstorm or something weird, and they made him orange for some reason. Which, if I'm complaining about the orange, you know something's off. <laughs> but anyway, um, really happy with both of these guys that we just got representations of them in uh, in our fiction. You know, like in, not in our fiction, in our toy lines. That's just super cool. I love that we're getting some Japanese characters uh, now in mainline releases. It's, it's just super cool. Like the, the Lyo convoy they put out, Leo Prime, whatever they're calling him, is really cool. Um, we got the we got the the Haslab Star Saber, which I know is a Haslab and not really a retail line, but I'm, I'm glad that we're seeing that representation of some of these characters that we haven't gotten easily to get in America here in these toy lines. And like I said, these two are a lot of fun. But uh, there is Voyager class Tarn from Legacy Evolution. Very cool. Very happy with him. Check him out if you're interested.